PC laptops. Not something we talk about often here on this channel, frankly, because I don't really use them. Like I have my massive desktop PC in my stream room. I built it myself. It's liquid cooled. The thing is a beast. I use it for gaming and I use it for streaming. But when I'm not doing those two things, I use an M1 Max MacBook Pro. And it's not because I'm like an Apple fanboy or anything. It's just I've never had as good of a laptop experience as I've had with the M1 Max MacBook Pro. If you've used one, you know what I'm talking about. Plus, I mean, we've had a handful of PC laptops come through Senpai HQ and they've been okay. They're not the same. So when I say that the Corsair Voyager A1600 is the first PC laptop that I have genuinely enjoyed using, it is high praise. I wanna go into exactly why I didn't hate this. One thing at a time. Let's jump into it. Hey, real quick, let me share with you a super cool new streaming tool and the sponsor of today's video, Blurp. Blurp lets your viewers play sound clips on your stream. Emotional, damn it! <laughs> and it gives you three different ways to do it. First, you can set them as channel point redemptions. And you can even set multiple sounds as a single redemption and set the odds to whatever you want. So one can play 99% of the time and another sound can play 1% of the time, which could be really fun for jump scares or giveaways. You can also have your viewers submit and set their own sounds using bits, which then of course yeah. you can approve with your mods. And lastly, you can let your top subscribers pick a walk on sound, which is a sound that plays when they enter your stream. Hello there. Hello there. So if you're looking for a great new way for your viewers to interact with your stream and maybe you make some revenue along the way, install Blurp. I'll put a link in the description below. I got a list, by the way. We're gonna run through that list. I wanna talk about these things in the order that I experienced them. Meaning when I opened it up, what were the first things I noticed, what were the first things I liked as I went through the experience? Okay, first off, can we just start off with a big one? Like let's start off with one that's gonna be a complete game changer. The screen. This screen is one of the best looking screens I've ever seen. Not only is it 1440p, it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, meaning it's, you know, you take the typical 16 by nine that you get a normal computer monitor with and make it a little bit taller. Again, just like the new MacBook Pro aspect ratio, but it's 1440p, it's 240 Hertz, and it's a beautiful matte anti-gloss finish. And it, it makes me wish that MacBooks had an anti-gloss screen. Cause man, the colors on this thing just pop. Like, like this image right here, that I don't know which camera we can see it on, but this image, the colors are popping. The resolution is crisp. It is, it is just gorgeous. Next thing I noticed that they did a fantastic job on, the keyboard is very crisp. What's the like normal thing you type? The, the lazy brown fox. <laughs> jumped over the lazy brown dog. <laughs> you, that's not right. But like, there's like no mushiness to these keys at all. This might be the most satisfying laptop keyboard I've ever felt. Like the travels, the perfect distance, the amount of tactileness, I think they did a great job on. I mean, again, they're Cherry MX. I would say they're a little bit loud. They're not overbearingly loud, but like if I were in an airport or in a classroom and I were typing on these, like taking notes, Oh, well, let's, let's just listen for a sec. Everyone shut up. Like, it's not like they're blue switches where they're just clicking unnecessarily, but they're not silent. And I, I feel like that's just gonna be a, a trade-off of how crisp these buttons feel. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video, this is not a sponsored video by Corsair. They sent me this laptop to try out. I am sending it back after the video is done. They didn't pay me for anything at all. They didn't get to see the video before I'm posting it live. Yeah, not a sponsored video. Important that you know that. But yeah, fantastic keyboard. Also, fingerprint sensor, which again, I'm gonna reference MacBooks a lot because that's what I know and it's what I'm coming from. Thank you for putting a fingerprint scanner in there. It's easy to set up. It's worked every time so far. I, I don't think laptops should come without fingerprint scanners nowadays. Next one, this is something um, very important to me and probably important to a lot of you, um, the trackpad. Let me just set the stage here for you real quick. So you know my expectations. I've had four to $5,000 laptops come through Senpai HQ with trackpads that were this big and felt Plastic like that top surface that you're interacting with is almost like creaking and moving as you're using it And when you press it down it like flexes to click guys the trackpad is your main Interface that connects you to your computer if you're making an expensive laptop 
please make it a good trackpad. And like, again, anyone coming from a MacBook knows what I'm talking about. My bar is so high for trackpads because MacBook trackpads, all Apple trackpads are a league above anything else. Unless you've used one, you don't understand what I'm talking about. And so while this is not Apple trackpad level, this is the best PC laptop trackpad that I've ever used. It is, first of all, massive. They didn't compromise any size on this thing. It goes all the way up against the keyboard, all the way down against the bottom. It is very firm, it's very smooth. I like the feel of it. And while it's still on a hinge, unlike Apple's trackpads, it's still on a hinge at the top where the button's at the bottom and it's on that like, what do they call it? It's not a diving board, but there's a word for a hinge. There's a word for it. It is a solid and very responsive trackpad. It also has these two little dots up here that are kind of cool. If you double tap, not click it, but just double tap on the top left one, it'll light up and the entire trackpad is now disabled. So if you're using like a mouse instead, mouse and keyboard, you don't have to worry about accidentally nudging it. They also have another dot in the top right where if you tap that, it disables the right side of the trackpad, but as you go over to the left side, the left side still works. So I assume this is for people who are typing and only use their left hand for the trackpad, which I guess is a, a thing. I know this is a feature I've never had before, but it's a thing, a couple nice trackpad features. So I, I just wanna say one more time, if you're building a $5,000, $4,000 laptop, please, please build in a nice trackpad. There's no excuse. The IO on this thing, for it being a moderately thin laptop, the IO is pretty good. We got on the right side an SD port, so this is obviously built for content creators and streamers and gamers in mind. We got these two USB 3.2 ports, one of them type C, one of them type A. And then on this side, you see it from this camera over here, we have the Kensington lock, we have the power, we have the headphone jack, and then we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Again, something I'm seeing more coming to PC laptops and it makes me very excited, especially for a powerhouse like this. But having Thunderbolt 4 connectivity makes it possible for this to be not only an on-the-go machine, but also a home workstation. You can have one of those, you know, CalDigit TS4, those crazy Thunderbolt hubs and have one cable coming out of it, close this thing up, plug it in, maybe plug it in in a, in a drawer that has decent airflow and you've got a home workstation without a massive desktop on your desk. And with the gaming experience I had this weekend, which we'll get to, it's very doable. All right, let's get into some of the interesting stuff because I am a big fan of practicality. I don't like features just for features sake that I know I'll never use, but I like adding things in that improve the quality of life. And they have this macro bar at the top. That's obviously the first thing you see when you open this thing up. Like, what is that? How do you control it? Is this like the Apple Touch Bar all over again, which I hated, <laughs> but it's not. And I love what they did and how they implemented this. We, if you're not aware, by the way, Corsair bought Elgato back in, what, 2019, 2020-ish? And so while building this laptop, they built Elgato functionality into it. So this is basically a 10 key stream deck. And when I say it's basically a 10 key stream deck, I'm not like, ah, oh, it's kind of a 10 key stream deck. No, you actually open the stream deck software and program it just like you would a real stream deck. That alone, as long as the rest of the computer works fine, right? As long as it's a good gaming and streaming experience, that alone, sets this a level above any other laptop for being my mobile streaming laptop. One of these buttons, you can see when I tapped S1 here, now you can see a whole bar that says Elgato in the middle and it shows you what all 10 of these buttons do and S1 is set to, what, is, what does the S stand for by the way? I'm trying to think of like any important word I've said that stands for S. They call it the macro bar. I have no idea what the S stands for. But you can see the S is their visibility button so you can turn it on and off and remind yourself what those buttons stand for. But you can set them to be anything that you can set a Stream Deck button to be. By default, they have it set to launch a bunch of different applications, but this feels like a proper symbiotic relationship between Corsair and Elgato. It's not just like Corsair bought it because they're interested in it and they want their revenue and they want to build up the company. They are implementing the Elgato software and features into their hardware, which is really cool. Oh, which by the way, there's, there's another one of those. You know how Elgato has a webcam now and it comes with software called Facecam. Well, their webcam up top also utilizes face cam software. You can open up the face cam app just like you would with a webcam, but instead control the built-in webcam, which is really cool. Oh, by the way, I probably should have pulled this up earlier when I was talking about it. This is what the software looks like when you pull up the Stream Deck app 
for the macro bar. You can see it's programmed exactly like a Stream Deck. I'm not 100% sure what that little middle screen is for other than a battery. Right now when I hit the arrow keys, those are the only options. I also think it's weird that whether you hit right or left, it swipes the same direction. But what is it like? to game on this. This thing's pretty packed with proper components. We've got the Ryzen 9 6900 HS in here and the Radeon RX 6800M. A lot of letters. Now my two games of choice are Valorant and Apex Legends and on both of them, I played them each for over an hour and I had a good time. Apex is not a super lightweight game, but on 1440p at settings around medium-ish, I was pulling about 100 to 120 frames, and even about an hour, hour and a half later, it was still running 90 to 110 frames nonstop, which is plenty of an experience. The fans were definitely running, and I wouldn't try playing a game like that on your lap, otherwise you'll never be able to have kids. But they weren't running so loud that I noticed it with gaming headphones on. When I switched over to Valorant, which is a much, much lighter load of a game, I was playing 1440p, settings all the way on Ultra, between 200 and 240 frames the entire time. So, is this a decent gaming experience? It's definitely up to my standards. In fact, the biggest issue I had while gaming wasn't actually with the performance of the game itself. It was simply just I didn't have enough USB-A ports to make everything I wanted to make wireless wireless. I either had to plug my headset into the audio jack or I had to plug in my CalDigit Thunderbolt dock to connect all the other things. Like when is that shift to USB-C going to happen? Like with peripherals, like a mouse, when, when is the other side going to be USB-C to plug in? When our motherboard's gonna have more USB-C ports? I'm looking forward to that day. One other thing that I actually really appreciated about this, and I don't know if it was intentional or if it's just the way the design happened because of the macro bar, but because of the macro bar, the hinge is, is kind of massive and the screen sits about two to three inches above the desk. So gaming on this screen is a little bit closer to eye level. Again, if that was intentional, props to you. <laughs> if not, I'm all in favor of a happy accident. The only thing I really wish this thing had as a gaming laptop, I feel like it should have an ethernet jet. I mean, you can always dongle in through one of the Thunderbolt ports, so it's not like a deal breaker or anything, but oh, now that I think about it, I didn't have the dock plugged in while I was gaming. I just realized that my Apex Legends session was over Wi-Fi. Yeah, these little notches right here are apparently Wi-Fi 6E antennas. I mean, I wasn't even in the same room as my router. So, that's great. <laughs> anyway, solid laptop, thoroughly enjoyed using it. Kinda bummed that I have to send it back considering it's really the only PC laptop I've had a great experience with. So, maybe send it back to me once you get this Corsair. We'll talk about it. Either way, do you guys have any questions about this laptop? Anything maybe I missed? Leave them in the comments down below. Please hit the like button if you haven't already. Tell me what you think of this laptop. Maybe do you have another PC laptop that I should take a look at if I'm looking for a good experience with a PC laptop? Let me know. And as always, happy streaming.